Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. You guys want to say hi to the puppy? I know you want to say hi to the puppy. Hi, Joe, baby. Yeah, thank you. Oh, so sweet. He's going to be joining us for the topic of conversation today, which is books that I refuse to hear criticism about. These probably are not all encompassing. Uh, they're not going to be every book that I refuse to hear criticism about, but they're going to be my top ones. Okay. And you can have criticisms about it, but don't tell me that you have criticisms about it because I'll probably start crying <laughs> or something. Okay, go play. We're going to hop right into it because I feel like I just need to address this uh, with, with all of you humans and the puppy's chewing on my books. So I feel like that's my sign to take them away from him. Here's my stack of books. The first one that I am going to talk about, though, is via Kindle because it hasn't come in the mail yet. You're going to know exactly what book I'm talking about because nobody can get their hands on it. I'm mad about this. I'm super mad about it because I broke my foot. I'll tell you how I did it. So we have this statue on my college's campus. It's called the Torch Bear, and it literally is like a dude holding a torch. And the torch is lit with fire 24-7, rain, snow, shine, whatever. It, there is fire. It's tradition for all of the graduates to roast marshmallows and like make s'mores using the torch bear. Well then me and my friends had the great idea that we should like climb up the statue and like try to take a picture on the statue's shoulders. Halfway up, I, I, my hand slipped and then my foot slipped and then I fell and I landed on my foot and it cracked and now it's broken. It's my right foot, so I wasn't able to drive. So I found this book like right before it became psychotically popular, like before everybody was talking about it but I couldn't drive myself to the bookstore because my foot was broken. And I had checked the locations, like my Knoxville location had the book in stock, but I was like, it's fine if it's in stock here, they'll have it in stock when I go back home and like somebody can drive me to the bookstore. Um, except they didn't, they've been out of it for weeks and months and I don't know if they're even gonna make the sprayed edges anymore. So welcome everybody to the fourth wing. I refuse to hear criticism about this book. I refuse, I refuse. You can think it's not worth the hype. You can have a lot of stipulations around it. You, you, you can hate it, but I don't wanna know. I, don't tell me, don't tell me that because I am obsessed. I'm, that's, that's what it is. Maybe it's because I relate to our main character who literally breaks her bones all the time, which is, that me, obviously, with my literal broken foot. But I just think it was so well done. Uh, you are attached to the characters, which is super important to me. The characters that you like, you like with your whole soul. And the characters you hate, you hate with a burning, fiery passion. <clears throat> I'm speaking of one in particular. I don't want to give any spoilers for people who haven't read it yet. Also, the dragons are awesome. They're hilarious. They're endearing. Uh, they make me want a pet dragon. They make me, like look at my cat and tell him that he needs to be a dragon and he needs to like mentally be able to speak to me. I adore it. I adore the relations between the characters. I adore the slow burn tension romance, the enemies to lovers. I just think it's a really good book. It's a book that I finished and I stared at the wall afterwards and I was like, oh, what do I do now? And like the end has such a like well done cliffhanger. I just love it. I love it. And I, I want the second one and I want the story to continue. Sorry if my knees are making anyone uncomfortable, but this is how I feel like sitting right now um, and how I feel like talking to you guys. So th that's what we're doing. Fourth wing spiel, done. Go read it. Next on my list, The Shadows Between Us. This is a standalone currently. I think she's gonna write a second book, but not about these two characters. This is a fantasy romance that happens in one novel and it's a really great palate cleanser. If you're like, I just need like a quick and easy fantasy romance that is enjoyable and there's not like a stupid amount of high stakes, this is it. This is about a girl who knows what she wants. She's on a mission to marry and kill the Shadow King who she doesn't think that she likes, but she kind of has a power trip. I mean, she does, She's it's a total power trip and she knows how to do it. And she's 110% successful until she, you know, starts to fall in love with him. I really loved this. I don't want to hear a bad word about it because it is such like a nice, fresh read, I guess, in between books. And you don't have to commit a lot of thought into it. Like it's just a story that takes you to a fantasy world where you, can just enjoy two people falling in love. And you know what? 
I'm bloody here for it. I'm bloody here for it. If you have criticism about that book, don't tell me. I don't want to know. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Um, for all my Hunger Games junkies, friends, don't tell me. If you have something negative to say about this, I don't want to know. I don't want to know, okay? First of all, the cover, beautiful, okay? I was really worried when I first picked this book up that it was really going to screw up the original series. I feel like a lot of the time when you make prequel books, they're just... They're not the originals. And this is not, this is not the original, but Suzanne Collins has the same vibes. Do I want a Finnick prequel? Yes. Do I want a Hamish prequel? Yes. I, there's so much potential there. Am I okay that she did a President Snow one once this book came out? Yes. I was very worried that we were either going to hate President Snow so much that it's just obvious who he becomes in the originals, or I was going to like him so much that I wasn't sure where he became awful and a psychopath. Suzanne Collins blew me away with this. I, truly, she did. She invented a story that shows young President Snow kind of, I mean, a little bit before he was corrupted, but not too much, you know? Throughout the book, you can see the, the selfish tendencies and the power trip that he has and the way that he wants to climb the ranks really badly. And then when you get to the end of it, you really start to see him kind of lose his mind and really pick himself over Lucy Gray. For those of you who haven't read it, this takes place during the 10th Hunger Games. President Snow is, we, you know him as Coriolanus Snow in this, and he is a student at the Academy. In order to graduate, they have the students become the mentors for the tributes. And this is before any of the cool technology stuff happens. Before the Hunger Games is the Hunger Games. I mean, like they literally fight in like a gladiator arena. It's very not what we know it as. President Snow has the tribute from District 12, Lucy Graybeard, and he wants her to win and he wants to help keep her alive. It's cool, it's fun, but that's not the whole story because even after the games, there is another twist and you see how this twist affects him. You see why he hates Mockingjay so much. You see him start to like kind of become that psychopath that we know him as. And I think it's so tastefully done. I could talk about this. I could talk about this for so long. If you have something bad to say about this book, I don't want to know. Uh, I, I, I don't want to know. Next. <clears throat> I'm going to get so many disagreements on this. If you have something bad to say about Red Queen, don't tell me. I love this series. I do. I really, really do. I read it a couple years ago. I need to reread it. And it was like the first like dystopian slash fantasy book that I had read in a long time that made me rethink my entire life once I finished it. I was so invested and the thing was, it's not even, it's not even a big romance and I, and I love my fantasy romance. It's there, but it's not huge. It's like not the focal point of the story. The fight scenes in this series are so good. King's Cage, which is here, it's the third book has one of the best fight scenes I've ever read in my life. And Victoria Aveyard, the author, prides herself on that. She's like, I can't write romance to save my life, but I can write a fight scene. And you know what, Queen? Slay, because they're so good. If you haven't read Red Queen, to tell you a little bit about it, it's basically, a, it's a dystopian society that has like magical powers, basically. The society is separated into people who have red blood and the people who have silver blood. And the people who have silver blood are like super elite, people and they have developed a mutation gene like way back in their ancestry that has given them special powers. So there's nymphs who can control water. There's, I don't remember all of the names. So like the green wardens who can like make the vines, you know, wrap around you and choke you. Um, there's the metal people that have a really fun name and I, Magnetron maybe, Mag, mm, that sounds like it's from Transformers. I don't know if that's right, but you can morph metal into whatever you want it to be. Those are the kind of basic powers that the silvers have and they treat the reds like they're scum because they don't have those powers and basically if you're a red you get an apprenticeship and you have a job and if you don't have that you get conscripted to war those are your two options and there's revolutions and there's war and there's fighting and there's special powers it's a whole thing it's a whole thing i hadn't read something like this since like a divergent and the hunger games era of my life i'm just really happy to find this this could lean ya there's not like spice in this book at all. There's one scene where it's maybe insinuated. It's truly like a character revolution war uh, book. I love it. Not gonna talk about this one for a while because it's obvious. 
if you have criticism about this book, keep it to yourself or go to another channel and talk about why you don't like it. Um, but don't talk to me about it because I won't hear it. I won't hear it. Are there things that I don't particularly like about this series? Maybe. Are, are there things that irritate me about the characters in this series? Maybe. But the world, the universe, the plot, and the magic makes up for it. Truly like fulfills my escapism complex to no end. I want to live in Prithian. I want to live in one of the courts. I don't care as long as it's not the spring court because my allergies are absolutely horrible and I would die probably. I want to live where there is a lot of magic. My escapism complex is fulfilled when I read this series. I don't care if there are things about this book that, you know, make me cock my head or make me clench my fist or make me want to punch a wall. I don't care because it gets overruled by everything else that I love about this book series. And so if you have something horrible to say about it, don't talk to me about it. I don't wanna know. This is my last one for this particular video because these are just the ones I grabbed off my bookshelf, like off the top of my head. I won't hear a word about it. I won't. You can talk about all of Allie Hazelwood's other books, but not this one. I don't wanna hear a bad word about it. Listen, I don't like rom com I mean, I'm not gonna say I don't like rom-coms, but I'm not like the biggest fan of rom-coms. I've just recently started dipping my toes in the rom-com waters. And to be honest, I haven't found one that I really, really enjoy aside from this one. This book is, it's smart, it's clever. The banter is fantastic. I love it because it feels very real. The connection between the two characters. I think it's hard for me to find attachment to characters in just like standalone rom-com books because I don't feel like the stakes are high enough and I don't feel like the books are probably long enough for me to form like severe attachments to these characters. And so a lot of rom-coms that I've picked up, I'm like, any of these characters could get hit by a train and would I care? Probably not. This one, I love their connection. I feel like they're my friends. I feel like I'm cheering on my best friend who just found her soulmate. That's what this book feels like. And I love the nerdiness of this. And I don't know if that's because I'm a nerd and I have a thing for like women in STEM. I'm so here for it. And all Hallie Hazelwood writes is about women in STEM. So I love that about her. I love that she's like a super genius. And I like that it's, she can be clever and nerdy and she finds someone who can be clever and nerdy with her, but also be, um, spicy and, and buff and, and pretty. And I don't care. I don't care if Adam is too perfect. And I don't care if she's like too pick me girl. I don't care because this book is a, what I like to call a cotton candy read, okay? And it makes me happy and books that make me happy, I don't want anyone to ruin that for me. So if you have something bad to say about it, go to a different comment section <laughs> because I love this book. I'll put my knees down. Thanks guys for uh, letting me sit with my knees like that. Thus ends my books I will not hear criticism about part one. We're gonna call it part one because I guarantee I'm gonna make a video about this in the future with a bunch more books that I've been reading and going to read. We'll start with these six. Thank you all for watching. I love you all very, very much. Please take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. Do something nice for yourself this evening and I will see you lovely, lovely humans in the next one. Bye guys.